Welcome to 31 Days of October, Week 5. Yes! Okay guys, I am at Spooky Empire right now. Uh, this is like Comic-Con for horror people. Um, I went to Spooky last April or March, and it was like a fraction the size of uh, this one. So, yeah, uh, I actually ran into one of uh, uh, Mike, Michael Pavone, who's a subscriber of mine, and I ran into Mia from uh, Killer Flicks, which is really cool. But uh, yeah, right now, you know, I've been walking around for like 15, 20 minutes just taking it all in because it's just so much to take in. But uh, I'm going to turn the camera around and let you guys see what it looks like. How you doing? Good. All right. Yeah, a lot of interesting characters here today. Pretty crazy. Hello, how you doing? And uh, there's cosplay for everything. Uh, you name a character, I've probably seen a cosplay of it. Uh, there's one right there. It's like a, uh, a, a post-apocalyptic Leatherface. It's cool. But leather, Leatherface that went on a diet, and then we got this guy right here. I don't know what that is, but uh, it's scary. Very scary. Uh, we got a Harley Quinn coming up here. Oh, there's Jason. And, uh, it's a demented Harley Quinn. Uh, I got a sadistic clown there. All kinds of good stuff. I have not went into the celebrity room yet. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting Felissa Rose and the, uh, the rest of the, the girls from Sleepaway Camp. I've heard the line for Elvira is pretty damn long. Uh, the line for X-Files is pretty damn long, so might have a tough time getting to those, but that's not the top of my priority list, so although I would like to see Elvira because I brought my Funko Pop, I brought my VHS tapes, I'm getting some signatures today, I took out a chunk of money, so we're going to see what happens. Oh, got to show you guys this. This is my favorite cosplay of the day. I've got a Ronald McDonald there, but it's like an evil version of it. How's it going? I had to get you on video, man. You look amazing. I got We Watched a Movie, Mike and Jay. I got Horror Addicts, CP from Will I Like It Reviews, my good buddy who's uh, been in the hospital, just had surgery, and he still got me a video, which is awesome. Uh, and Emily from Emily's Adventures in Horrorland. First time on the show, Michael Trapson, good friend of mine, amazing Michael Jackson impersonator. Maria Amelia, another good friend of mine. This is her first time on the channel. For it, so looking forward to having her. Uh, yeah, so many awesome guests for you guys. And also Art from the A to Z show, as well as Let Me Explain. Super pumped to have him. So, anyway, looking forward to uh, seeing what these guys watch. Uh, first up, we're gonna start with the Horror Addicts. Uh, amazing friends of mine. We got Danny Nightmare and Gory B Movie. They have been on every single episode. Would not be a 31 Days of October without them. Uh, and I'm bouncing around here. There's so much going on. But uh, anyway, take it away, horror addicts. Hey, I'm Gory B Movie. And I'm Oz. And I'm Danny Nightmare. And, and we are horror, horror addicts. addicts. Howdy, Lee. We are super excited to join you for another 31 Nights of October. We've been in every single one of these since the beginning. And this year, we have some very interesting movies to talk to you about. For starters, horror and hamsters. Hamsters? And it is an anthology series where horror shorts are mixed with hamsters. Sh Shorts of hamsters. <laughs> I took it kind of like Saturday Night Live, but horror instead of comedy. And instead of having a celebrity guest, cute, cuddly hamsters. Yes. And they're amazing. They go through a little obstacle course. They search for treasure. And eat sunflower seeds. <laughs> Lots oh, of sunflower right. seeds. That's the best treasure for a hamster. But let's talk about the shorts. By far our favorite is the first one, which is sort of like a spoof trailer. Oh. You see homages to Evil Dead, Cabin in the Woods, and The Ring. It ends up being the horror version of... <gasps> Elmer Fudd. Oh, hello. Dun, dun. Done. The whole anthology is very tongue-in-cheek, very silly. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Then again, why would it? It's horror and hamsters. For me, it works. I had a great time watching this with them. The hamsters great, the horror great, the ridiculousness of it. 
Great. <laughs> Very ridiculous. And it was my favorite horror movie of the year to get the last stamp of approval. Wow. Just wow. Different. He does not give that stamp out lightly. No. And the hamster part of it is very family friendly. The shorts, not so much. You get regular boobs, werewolf boobs, fornicating. Plenty of bloodshed, lots of gore. Someone even takes a shotgun blast to the face. And a baby gets murdered. But it's okay, because it's Jesus approved. Oh yeah, Jesus is in this movie. That baby had it coming. He totes did. I mean, it had the voice of Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I'll terrorize nuns and punch puppies. Oh yeah, amazing Morgan Freeman impression in this movie. Twice. Once in the horror shorts, once for the hamster race. And even though we love this movie, we do have a few criticisms. Like that long, awkward sex scene. I think most of them don't push the envelope too much, but there's one about an incubus that was very awkward watching with a child. I think parents should try and skip that one. Skip <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, our kid's 14 and... He's seen a lot of horror movies, so I don't think he's going to be too scarred, but I don't know if I can recover from that. As for me, there was a few of the times where the effects, yes, do kind of fault, and a lot of it has to do with filming outside in the dark, and you can't really see what's going on very well, but they don't have a whole lot of that. They usually, like I said, play to their strengths. A couple of the shorts were not as strong as some of the other shorts. A couple in particular, the Incubus one, and another one about werewolves went on for a very long time. I think a couple of them did go a little long, and a couple of them didn't even get started. None of them are too bad, but some of them are home runs, some of them are bunts. It started it starts off really strong, it ends really strong, there are a few that are kind of forgettable. But nothing that I thought was actually ever really that bad. I enjoyed myself pretty much the whole time. Absolutely. Even the worst in this anthology isn't that bad. It's watchable the whole way through. And I love that after every horror short is a hamster short. Why don't we make horror movies like that? Especially <laughs> the really brutal ones, you know, the ones that kind of turn your stomach. Like you watch Hostel, then you watch a hamster video. <laughs> I think if anything, we might just be glad that they're making movie anthologies and not kicking our ass at YouTube because they got the best of both worlds. Horror and cute little animals. And it would kill us out one day, one by one. <laughs> Rocky, you need to be cuter. <laughs> we need to inject him the cute stuff. Final thoughts on this, your favorite hamster. Dump truck. Dump truck. Dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. She's got a valley girl voice and she hangs out with her girlfriends, but her name's Dump Truck. Also, she's very tuppies. So, do we recommend it? I'm gonna have to say 100%. You need to see this. I give it a see it. You need to buy two versions of it. Just buy one version for your grandma, one version for you, one version for your friends, and it's by a mountain load. Apparently, get it for everybody as a Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Or a Halloween present. Oh, there both. you go. We have one more movie to talk to you about, but unfortunately, Lols didn't watch that one with us. Oh, all right. <sighs> he just takes off. Teenagers, I tell ya. Can't control them. Especially when they're half demon. So last night, we checked out a movie called Thoroughbreds. Now, this isn't a straight horror movie. This is more of a thriller, but it dark, yo. But yeah, I'd say the premise is still pretty horrifying. It's about two girls. They're teenagers. One of them is pretty clearly a sociopath. She doesn't feel anything. The other one is very angry and upset and confused. She has a stepfather that she absolutely hates. She's been kicked out of boarding school. Her whole life is stressing her out. Out, and she comes to the conclusion that a murder may just solve all of her problems. Now, a horror element of this movie is it does have a little bit of bloodshed and a couple of scenes. But I think what makes this really scary is the psychological aspect of it. Is it scarier to be confronted with somebody who feels absolutely nothing, not even guilt? Or is it scarier when someone will do anything and push all their feelings down just to get what they want. It raises a lot of really interesting questions. It also has Anton Yelchin in this, who sadly passed away last year. Very talented actor. I loved him mm -hmm. in Green Room. Me and Laws have heavily enjoyed his voice acting in Troll Hunter, and he's gonna be missed. And the two leads were Olivia Cook and Anya Taylor-Joy. They're both phenomenal, as they are in everything. You know, Olivia Cook was in Ready Player One. She's been in loads of horror movies. Anya Taylor-Joy was in The Witch. Mm -hmm. So these are both very talented young women. I think these are, you know, possibly the next generation 
generation of horror right here and I'm always excited to see what they come out with. This movie did not disappoint. Sometimes I'm not 100% sure how intentional it was, but this movie has a lot of humor and it kind of makes me wish I had a sociopathic friend. You know, I've <laughs> never wanted that before, but after this movie, I totes want a sociopathic best friend. Sociopathic friends are the new gay friends. I loved how in this movie she can be completely honest with this sociopathic friend of hers because she can't hurt her feelings. She can confuse her and maybe frustrate her a little bit, but that's about it. You know what? In a strange way, it kind of reminded me of the relationship between Kirk and Spock. That's yeah, sweet. I'd say uh, Spock is in a sense a sociopath without feelings and Kirk was a definite narcissist. I mean, the pacing was a little slow at times for me. It wasn't like, because there wasn't a whole lot of action and I would have liked to have seen some of those violent scenes instead of just hear them or hear about them. That didn't bother me, though I was confused by how periodically through the film it would say chapter one, chapter two. I don't really understand what that was for or where that was going because it didn't seem to go anywhere. I felt it was just kind of being artsy for the sake of being artsy. Yeah, but beyond that, I really liked the movie. It looks great. The acting is great. The story is great. It's it's solid. It's a solid watch. I highly recommend that you check it out. I'm definitely going to say you should see this film, unless you're a horse then it might be too scary for you. So that's what we watched this week. We also went out to the theater and we saw the new Halloween movie with my brother and with Lulz. It was his first rated R movie in the theater. How did he respond to it? Well, you're gonna have to check out our video to find out. So come over and visit us, the spooky family that reviews all things horror. Our review of Halloween will be up tonight, Halloween night. And once again, thank you so much, Lee, for having us. We love being a part of your 31 days of October. And we love you, Lee. Happy Halloween. Next up, a good friend of mine, um, Michael Trapson. He has over 200,000 subscribers. And uh, we've been friends for quite a while because he is such a, a horror fan and I happen to be a big Michael Jackson fan. So we hit it off pretty well. But uh, I asked him if he could come on, and uh, he said, of course. He loves horror, so he wanted to talk about horror. So, anyway, take it away. Michael Traps. Simona. Oh! Hey, what's up, Drum Dums? It's your boy, Michael Trapson, wishing you a happy, happy, groovy Halloween. Thanks for having me on your channel, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, and since it is Halloween, I want to tell you guys how I celebrate my Halloween season. <laughs> First off, I love watching some Michael Myers. I love preferably the first one. I love the second one, I love the fourth one, and I love Resurrection. Those are my four favorites from the OG series. I know you don't like Resurrection. I know you don't like Resurrection, Lee. I know you hate it, but we can all agree that no one is more disrespectful to Michael Myers than Dr. Sartain, okay? With that being said, shout out to the 2018 version because that joint was lit. What's saying show his head too much? What's saying show the side of the stage? What's just kept his stuff in the shadows? But other than that, it was a great movie. My second franchise I like to watch during Halloween is Friday 13th. I love part three, four, six, and uh, Jason Goes to Hell. And I love Jason Takes Manhattan. It was my favorite. Out of the fan franchise. And last but not least, you already know, I like to watch my da -da, da -da -da. Love to watch Thriller. They just came out with Thriller in IMAX 3D. They were showing it down here at the theaters about a month and a half ago. And it was groovy. <laughs> and you know I went down there and checked it out. I didn't see it in 3D, but I checked it out. Always good to watch Thriller during the Halloween season, you know, keeping the spirit of Michael Jackson alive. So those are some of the things I like to do during my Halloween season. You know, little Michael Myers, little Jason, little zombies, little Thriller. Oh! Hope you guys have a very good Halloween season of the witch. <laughs> Thank you, Drum Dumps, for having me. I love your channel, man. Keep up the good content and good work, man. The hard community loves you, man. We need more people like you to talk about all these groovy movies. <laughs> Shimona! Next up, first time on the channel, Maria Amelia. She has this awesome uh, Pennywise video that's got like a million views, which is crazy. Uh, and she she puts out not just horror content, but all kinds of great content, period. And, you know, very eloquent. And uh, so looking forward to having her on the channel. So looking forward to seeing what she watched. Take it away, Maria. 
everyone, this is Maria from Cine Club and happy Halloween. Thank you so much for having me and thank you to Lee for inviting me to be a part of 31 Days of October. Now, if you know me even just a little bit, you know that horror is not exactly my genre to go to, mostly because I am a big scaredy cat and these movies really spook me. But I thought there was no better moment to just dive in and experience some of the cult classics, some of the horror classics, and some of the new scary movies. So for this week of Halloween, I have quite a potpourri of horror movies that I would like to share with you today. To start, I'm going to talk about a foreign horror movie called The Wailing. And this one got me good. The Wailing is a Korean horror film where a mysterious illness starts to spread in the small village after a stranger moves into the area. Now it is up to this policeman who is not necessarily the most adept policeman in order to stop the illness, to stop the situation, in order to save his family. At first, the movie appears to be a little bit silly, but that mostly comes from the main character's perspective. While some imagery is a little bit gory and kind of zombie-like, there is something kind of light and strange about the beginning of the movie, but that quickly changes. Trust me, this movie quickly packs a punch that is combining folklore, superstition, and religious elements. While the movie doesn't rely a lot on scare jumps, and I do appreciate that, it does have a sort of atmosphere that makes you feel uneasy, and the ending will stay with you for days. It is a great movie to watch with someone because you immediately want to talk about it and you kind of want to analyze it and try to pick it apart. The next movie I watched was Mother. Now, while some people might not consider this a horror movie, I think there are enough elements of horror and this sort of like ominous tone that make it a really interesting horror film. It is best to say nothing about this film, to just go in and watch it and experience it. But if I must, Mother is about a couple who is trying to create their home into an oasis, a paradise for themselves. And that vision and that dream quickly becomes threatened when some unexpected visitors decide to stay. Now, I have heard everything when it comes to this movie. Some people love it, some people hate it. In my opinion, I think this movie is genius. Without saying much, I think it's a great critique on humanity, kind of a study about it. And you get all of that wrapped around the metaphor of this house and the dynamic between Javier Bardem and Jennifer Lawrence's character. I think the movie successfully makes you feel uncomfortable in a really relatable way, in the way that someone is taking up your space, that haven where you feel so protected and so much like yourself, but then expands it into this sort of incredible message and metaphor about life and humanity. Regardless of what you think of the movie, I think it's worth a watch, especially if you don't know anything about it, and just let yourself experience it and feel what the movie wants you to feel. The next movie I watched for my Halloween week was Suspiria, the original one, not the one that just came out. So Suspiria is a 1977 Italian horror film, and there are many reasons to like it, and there are many reasons why it's not necessarily fantastic. Suspiria follows the story of an American ballet dancer that is transferred to a very prestigious German academy. And as soon as she gets there, she finds out there's a lot of strange things going on, like unresolved murders, some supernatural things, and overall just a very weird, dark feeling about this academy. While certain things can feel a little bit corny and outdated, in my opinion, the practical effects and even the score, there are definitely enough elements about Suspiria that make this movie worth watching. I think it creates an incredible creepy setting with this sort of like maze type of building with gothic interiors and then the juxtaposition of the ballet dancers, but then sort of this ominous feel coming from the teachers and the secrets that they know. I think the story is excellent. More importantly, it's a beautiful movie to look at. The interiors are rich and expressive. The color palette is bold and vibrant. I guarantee you, you will never forget the photography of Suspiria. The next movie I watched was kind of weird, but it was short and sweet, and it is Creep. Creep tells the story in the style of found footage about this cameraman who is hired by this other man for eight hours to just basically film him. And things get very creepy and very dangerous very quickly. I don't think the movie is longer than an hour and let's say 15 minutes. So it's a pretty condensed, simple story. But even so, I do wish there had been a bit more complications throughout the story. That being said, I think it successfully makes you feel very weirded out, especially with the style of found footage, because then you feel like you're doing this one-on-one -on -one with this man and there's no way to escape without probably provoking him or getting yourself in danger. I feel like Mar Duplass's performance was excellent. He is definitely very creepy and very scary and I think the story felt very fresh and different and it left me wanting more. Luckily there is a second movie so we will see. Now the final movie I watched and I think this is definitely the big one that is Hereditary. Again, it's a movie that it's best if you just dive into it and watch it without having someone explain it too much to you. 
But if I must, Hereditary tells the story of a family and the events that followed after the grandmother passes away. A grandmother who had been mentally ill, aggressive, and incredibly emotionally manipulative to her daughter. Now the actions of said grandmother clearly affect the future generations and family secrets start to emerge. Like I said, the less you know, the better. And in the beginning, I felt very misled by this movie. I thought it was going in one way and it totally went a different way. But once I got over that, and the more I think about this movie as time goes by, I can tell you this movie is brilliant. One of the things I think make this movie so brilliant is the storytelling and the clever ways it provides you information without saying too much. For example, the dollhouses throughout the movie tell you a lot about what's happening and the mental state of the main character. There are also a lot of objects and clues and people throughout the movie that can tell you a lot, but if you're not paying attention, you're not going to see it. Which is one of the reasons why I think this movie is worth watching twice, even if you have to sleep with the lights on for quite a while. The imagery is dark and uncomfortable and it will haunt you and stay with you for quite a while after you've seen this movie. That is pretty much everything I have been watching for this week of Halloween. It has been a lot of fun diving in and exploring this genre. And for everyone out there, happy Halloween, be safe, and scare the bejesus out of a lot of people. With your costumes, not with your faces, I hope. What's up guys? A uh, total spontaneous thing here. This is uh, the lovely Melinda DeVave. She has a new movie with Tom Sizemore and herself, and who else? E.G. Daly. E.G. Daly, okay. And the movie is called The Lich, the Lich, and it is... Describe The Lich for me. Go ahead. The Lich is basically Evil Dead and meets the craft. So, <laughs> you don't know what? It's Evil Dead meets the craft. Um, and if you're at Spooky Empire, you can buy this you for $20. You can buy $20. this for $20. Yep. And $20 gets you a DVD, one of our wonderful t shirts. Yes. Awesome. And a chance to be in one of our upcoming films, Wolf Film. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll be getting mine right now. My next guest is one fifth of Scream Stream. It's uh, CP from All I Like Our Reviews. And uh, you know, I'm shocked that he was even able to do this given his condition right now. But uh, he, I, yeah, I begged him pretty much. Can you please still be in here somehow, some way? And he did. And so I'm so happy. And uh, I cherish, cherish his friendship. So anyway, take it away, CP. Hello one, hello all. Uh, for once, uh, I finally uh, feel the way I look, uh, which is like shit. I'm here at the hospital. Uh, I know Lee was to have me on here for the last week of 31 days of Halloween. Um, but uh, I, I had a bunch of jokes. Uh, I was going to give him a hard time about how this thing was planned back in August. There was a couple of gags. Um, and here I am last minute not being able to do it. Uh, I've recently had my gallbladder taken out. Um, here, here's some gore for you to fit in with the spirit. This is literally actually my blood, um, spare blood from my stomach. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I'm gonna take a, a bit of a vacation from giving Lee a hard time because uh, perhaps that's karma speaking to me that, that here I am in, right in time for this video, uh, I come down with this, this horrible emergency. Um, and so I'm going to take a different path. Uh, just just going to thank Lee for his years of friendship. And uh, Lee, you're doing a great job. Uh, now please take the, the voodoo cass off of me. Um, no, seriously, you're doing fantastic. Uh, it's, 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 it's well deserved. Um, it couldn't happen to a nicer person. Uh, I realize people think that I'm just a dick, but it is all just in good humor. And you know that. Um, and that's all that really matters to me, is if you know that I'm just messing around. Uh, because I am. Um, so, yeah, ab about Halloween and, and what I watched. Uh, I watched the new Halloween, and I quite enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five on Letterboxd. But that might as well be a, a two out of a hundred in certain circles. Um, maybe, maybe if, if you guys give a shit or if Lee gives a shit, maybe I'll get you guys the original video where I was giving Lee a hard time because me being nice in, in a drum dumbs video to Lee just doesn't seem appropriate. But I figured just in case I die here at the hospital, I don't want to be completely in character. Um, so enjoy everybody else's videos for Halloween. And I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't be left out of one of these things. 
Uh, thanks for having me again, Lee. No matter how depressing and ugly and disgusting and terrible this may be, uh, take it the fuck easy. There's so much going on here. Um, next up, um, Emily, CP's better half from Emily's Adventures in Warlands. I always say Emily is one of the most underrated YouTubers out there as far as like work that goes into a video. I think she's unmatched. It's insane. She does three characters. She puts a lot. You can tell she probably spends a week on each video. So anyway, looking forward to seeing what she watched. Take it away, Emily. Hi, Lee. Thank you for having me on your channel again. Uh, this year, I've tried to watch a little bit more horror fair for you. So first of all, I'd like to talk very quickly about Hellfest. I was actually excited for this one because it seemed to be a unique concept of a constructed perilous hellscape of a fairground that concealed an actually dangerous killer. And it was a fun watch, but in the sense that any theme park is exciting. There wasn't much in the way of character development for our protagonists. It was more like following a group of acquaintances around a haunted house attraction. Wouldn't be surprised if this was filmed as an existing scary theme park as a gentle form of advertisement. I liked our main character, but then again I have a thing for redheads, so maybe I'm biased. At least she seems to have some wits about her, especially at the end. Another thing I managed to catch fairly recently was Terrifier on Netflix. It was an interesting film, not shy about the fact that it was low budget, and it was simultaneously fresh and tired somehow. Mostly what I liked about the movie was the clown himself. I think his name is supposed to be Art because he writes that on a bathroom wall in Blood and Feces, but maybe he was just labelling it as art, and who are we to judge? So this guy is a bit of a mime, I think, with all the black and white and the no speaking. But nonetheless, he manages to convey a lot of character. He revels in his own creepiness, he has a ton of fun with the kills, he rolls his eyes now and then in exasperation, he reverts to a childlike state when someone approaches him with kindness. It was all a lot of uh, good stuff, really, especially as someone with severe slasher fatigue. I like Dart the Clown so much better than the nameless boring killer from Hellfest. Final thing I liked was the crazy cat lady, who was genuinely sweet and likeable, and tried to approach Art the Clown with maternal affection, which I've never seen tried in a horror movie before. Unfortunately, the film does have its downsides, like a predictable plot with clueless, sometimes stupid characters blundering around and getting picked off one by one. It's just quite basic, and there's no deeper meaning to anything, just a psychotic clown who wants to kill anyone who stumbles into his abandoned warehouse? I don't think it's even his. I can see why Terrifier is bound to become a cult classic, but I probably won't watch it again unless it's on. I also went and saw the new Halloween movie. Don't worry, I'll keep this spoiler free. I'm in the pretty unique position of only having seen the first Halloween movie all the way through. I've half watched the others because CP was doing a ranking list not long ago, but for all intents and purposes, I was able to watch Halloween 2018 as a direct sequel to John Carpenter's Halloween. The original isn't perfect by any means. A lot of the acting is kind of wooden, especially this girl. And the Dawson casting was pretty distracting, to me at least. You are 26. But it had some things going for it. I liked the stylistic choices, like the long-held shots and the repeated use of the movie's theme. And I'm sure at the time there was no horror villain quite like Mike, with his creepy-as-fuck mask, his insane physical strength, his seeming immortality, his unflinching evil. But the problem is, as I mentioned before, I have slasher fatigue. I am particularly sensitive to the tropes of this subgenre, and most of Michael's credibility came from Dr. Loomis, in my opinion. So already the new film had an uphill struggle to make me like it. Goddamn Donald Pleasant selfishly dying. <laughs> the doctor they replaced him with, Dr. Sartain, is okay. They have him as Loomis's protege, and while he's pretty much a stranger to us, he still gives a memorable performance. There's a twist involving him later on, and I knew what he was going to do a second before he did it. The best part of Halloween 2018 was Jamie Lee Curtis, reprising her role as Laurie Strode, of course. Her acting has greatly improved after 40 years, as you'd hope, and she was very credible as the emotionally damaged but still kick-ass grandma. I actually felt pretty sorry for her character. It seems like no one's even bothered to treat her obvious PTSD. And if they did, well, she just wasn't having it. And another thing, what is it with toilet terror recently? I've seen this done in Halloween, Hellfest, and this trailer I saw the other day. What an oddly specific trend. Hmm. Anyway. Are you kidding? I'm going fucking insane. This is the third time I've recorded this, and everyone decides to mow their lawn all at once. I'm fucking sick of it. I can't stand it. Why? Why now of all times? What kind of fucking psycho decides to mow the lawn at five in the afternoon? It's five in the afternoon. They should be sitting down for a meal or something. 
Why do they have to fucking fuck off? I think the thing with Michael in this movie is that he's mortal, which is good to know, but I think this movie is proving to be extremely popular. I think they'll be hedging their bets with Michael, just keeping him in their back pocket for a while. I'd be very surprised if this is the ultimate Halloween movie. Again, no spoilers, but, you know. He was kind of scary, and it was nice that he had a bit of motivation in this one. You see it in the trailer. He's coming for Laurie Strode, which is interesting. So, yeah, good on them. Gets a thumbs up from me. On to the next movie, then. I finally decided to watch Creepshow. Whatever expectations I went in with were certainly exceeded. The Stephen Kingness of the thing was on point, but stylistically, it might be the most interesting horror movie I've seen in a while. First of all, the stories in the anthology are supposed to come from a small boy's comic books, so you have panels and graphics, all that good stuff. It kind of reminded me of an old kid's TV show called Zap, but it was a British thing in the 1990s, so Lee's audience, you probably haven't seen it. But about Creepshow, I loved everything about this. I loved the coloured lights, the spooktacular music, the ghostly fog and dusty cobwebs, the skin-crawling foley work, the effects by Tom Savini! Overall, I think this movie is great for a Halloween watch, because Halloween is for the kids, and this movie kind of made me feel like a kid again by creatively exploiting my love of squeam and just brimming over with ghoulish glee. Not to mention it made me chuckle at multiple points in the film. The Department of Meteors, for fuck's sake. There are some very fine actors in this who manage to ground the otherwise comical proceedings, and there's bound to be at least one story in this anthology that tickles you in the right way. My personal favourites were the third and fifth segments, because I was not prepared for those cockroaches. Real ones, too. Some big, beefy ones in there. Just, eh. Finally, speaking of Stephen King, I've been re-watching 1408. I've spoken at length on my Patreon about why this is one of my all-time favourite horror movies, so I'm sorry to be repeating some things, but basically this movie is low-key the love of my life. It's one of my top five Stephen King movies, and very underrated. It's a stark contrast to something like Terrifier, as it has deep psychological depths. It's the story of a paranormal debunker who enters an evil hotel room and is confronted with his failings as a husband, father and son and plunges through the nine circles of hell in perpetuity. It's an outstanding performance from John Cusack, essentially alone in the room for half the film, and Samuel L. Jackson as the composed and supercilious hotel manager. I love it for many reasons, really, and it's one of those movies I can watch again and again with rapt interest every time. I think I'll make it one of my new Halloween traditions. I used to watch the hundred scariest movie moments, but it's been taken down from YouTube permanently, so yeah, I need new traditions. Well, that's everything I think. Third time filming this, so uh, it had better be. Thank you again, Lee, for having me, and to everyone else, have a safe and happy Halloween. Cheerio. Next up, it is so cool to say these guys are my friends. Mike and Jay from We Watched the Movie. We did uh, Hollow Stream 1 and 2 together. And uh, they're just the most, for, for guys with 60,000 subscribers, they're the most down to earth people you'll ever meet. And uh, just so funny and so approachable. And uh, it's, it's an honor to call them my friends. So looking forward to seeing what they uh, cook up for this episode. Anyway, take it away, Mike and Jay. Hey guys, where we watched a movie. Uh, thank you, Lee. Lee, 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 for inviting us to your 31 days. Give us the drum dums and free my soul. I want to get <laughs> lost in Lee's home and drift Why away. Why didn't you say hole? I didn't want to say that. You should have said hole. That's nasty. I want to get lost in Lee. Lee's. Do you want to get lost in the holes? Hole. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, 31 Days of Horror, dude. We're honored to be on this wonderful Immaculate channel. Uh, one of the few channels on YouTube that I watch. Lee is a sexual son of a bitch. And, uh, one of the nicest a nice dudes man. ever. Yeah, you're a great dude. Sweet sexual And man. I think about you sometimes when I go to sleep. So, what? anyways. Um, That's why that butter ran low. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so the idea is this is uh, what horror movies did we watch this week? Jay! Oh, shit. What the fuck did you watch this week? I wasn't sure whether or not to say fuck, but I know I it's don't know. Okay. You, you sounded like my stepfather getting ready to scold me on something. Like, you should have never been born. Thanks, Dad. Uh, I watched Personal. three movies that were horror related. I watched uh, one. I'll get to that one. Uh, I did watch Ghostbusters. I mean, I know, I get it. It may not be horror necessarily, but cross the streams, Ray. Okay, let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. Love that movie. Number one favorite movie of all time, Busters of Ghosts. Uh, they don't care. They'll take it down. Stay puck Marshmallow Man. And then I watched uh, 13 Ghosts. I, I, that's a guilty pleasure of mine. I love that fucking movie. I don't know why. Matthew Lillard's hilarious in it. You know, he was like, there are ghosts. 
in this house for you and your family. Go about. And then that guy from Monk is like goats. He's like not goats, ghosts. <laughs> Give me the phone, dick. Yeah, uh, you know he's like they like to wait till you get up to the glass and they give you a big fat poof. But yeah, I love that movie. That movie's great. And um, Shannon Elizabeth is that her, no or Elizabeth Hurley? What the fuck is her name? The hot. It's chick. not Elizabeth Hurley. It's the chick from American Pie. She's hot as shit. She's still bangable, and I would jack off in a sock for her. Uh, <laughs> Because I wouldn't get it up. I mean, I would get it up, but I'd be scared. Don't and, ever touch his hands or his laundry. And so the other movie that I watched that I couldn't get through because it scares the shit talk out of me is, uh, and I know you guys, I know, I get it, but I started watching the fucking Grudge, and I had to turn that. Movie bitch, sucks, man. I had to turn that bitch off though, and she's like, uh, I hate that herky jerky shit. I can't deal with that. It was late, and I was like, what am I doing with my life? This is not what I should be doing. And then I dusted off the Bible. That movie's boring. <laughs> And not scary. It was scary. And it's just off, a little painted Japanese boy in a closet going, I don't, I, Fuck him and his mother. But the mother. Chevelle does that in their songs. I don't care. That's I listen to that. that that's not attacking me in my sleep. This bitch comes down the stairs like. She, I don't know what it was. I think it was reminding me of my ex wife walking down the aisle. <laughs> it's just like terrifying. And I was like, looking back on it, that was a mistake. But yeah, that, I couldn't get through that. But those are the three horror movies that I watched this week. Yeah, what we've done on the channel this month is we've done pure, just nothing but happy. Halloween in honor of the new movie coming out. We've done pure Halloween, so we watched all the Halloweens, but we watched those all the fucking time. So, what else can you say about the Halloween movies? We've both seen Halloween 2018 loved twice it. in the past couple weeks. We both loved it. It was amazing as shit. Um, but other stuff, dude, I've been most of my free time, which has been very, very few and far between uh, this month, has been trying to catch up on Hill House, The Haunting of Hill House, oh. which is a terribly fucking named. Uh, show by Mike Flanagan on Netflix. Tongue twister. One of the worst goddamn names of a show of all time. Say it's it like three times The fast. Haunting, The Haunting of Hill House, Hill House is uh, Haunting of American Hartley, House of Molly Haunted Hartley. Hills. Fucking, Ozzy it's Osborne. just, it's terribly named. But Mike Flanagan, dude, he does this awesome thing where he's in all, he does all these Netflix properties and he bangs them out pretty quick. He, he's done Hush, he did uh, Oculus, which is not, it's not, I kinda like not a Netflix movie, but no, he, he, he did Gerald's Game, which is straight for Netflix, which uh -huh. was badass. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Uh, Lick my foot! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this one, The Haunting of Hill House, was actually really good, man. It was one of those things. I've never watched something before and had that. Maybe like Memento. Like, you know how you watch Memento by Christopher Nolan and you're like, I remember like, I was that drunk. Fuck. Like, <laughs> this had to be a bitch to film and to edit. Like, that oh, had to yeah. be so hard. And that's what I felt watching this entire like show. Like, keeping it straight in your head as a director. You're like, okay, well, that happened. Or and, right. then I, and then, oh, fuck, I got to go back and film it. Shit. It's crazy, man. My the car's way, getting towed. And they do kind of a lost thing where, like, uh, different uh, episodes focus on one character, but they jump from when they're children and they lived in Hill House, which was haunted as fuck, and now where they're grown and they've, they've each got their own issues. One of them's an addict. They all have issues mm -hmm. they're going with. And then uh, they go back to it. Yeah, like they go back That's and forth, smart. back and forth, and like it, 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 it ends up intertwining. But dude, that show is so fucking deep, man. Like it's emotional as hell. Uh, pretty much anybody who's ever been through anything with any family member in their life will find some emotional center point in that because it's just it's really really deep, man. And when the shit finally hits the fans, you're like, oh, like, was it good? It, oh, dude, it was amazing. Is there herky jerkies? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's a little herky jerky. There's no a lot it. of ghosts. Dude, you'll love it. It's creepy as fuck. There's so much. Are there good. subtitles available? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, go You little it. wiener. Mute it. Um, yeah, you should watch movies with this guy. <laughs> no, first off. Yeah. Why are you recreating what it was like? I would look at you day? in the theater. I did this. When I did fucking, these. I, yeah, no, I would. Or I do one of these. Like when you look down at the floor. No, and then you try dude. To, I've looked at you in the theater when a scary part. Why are you parts, looking at me? Watch the movie. When a scary part, because I can hear you breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. That's you, bitch. <laughs> fucking, um, and then when, when something scary that's not as scary comes up, you go, you go, the shut up, you go, hmm. <laughs> like fucking oddly. But if something like, scary is about to happen, I'll look over at you and your face will be looking forward, but you'll be going, <laughs> this shit. Because you're scared. I, I, know, I, fucking, I get scared. But uh, no, anyway, they, they're shit in there that's scary, man. It will fuck you up. I don't you should, watch it. You should totally watch it. I know By the way, I just think it's funny. You still haven't watched Hereditary. I know. Well, I think it's fun. Well, there's a reason why. Yeah, I know. I don't like to go over my family history. But no, I think it's funny, though, is like, you, like, you know a house is haunted when you're a kid. You know there's some fucked up things there, and you went through that as a child. 
and you're all screwed up now, I got a good idea. Let's go back to the same Whoa. house that fucked me up. House it's like as dumb as Forrest Gump getting with Jenny. No, they don't They don't just do it willy-nilly. They're She's not like, like oh. I want to go back and take pictures of the shit. <laughs> they, they fucking, like, the house draws them back. Like, oh. Shit happens in their lives. This really, dude, it's so deep and intricate, and I'm sure you guys can hear my dog <laughs> licking his toys and his balls He's right about now. as bored as I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I watched that. That was really, really good, but it's, I'm warning you, it's one of those things that you're not going to feel good after after you watch it like at some, we were like seven episodes in mm -hmm. and I was like I, you know I, I want to finish it I have to finish it it's good I want to see what happens but I need to watch like Bob's Burgers or something <laughs> afterwards because it just puts me in a dark Burgers dark place but it's really well done it's an awesome Netflix show one of the best um, movie wise I also watched this movie god damn there's more yes you <laughs> slut oh shit um, whores <laughs> I watched a movie called um, oh fuck I forgot the goddamn name that's the name damn that's, that's a Pornhub now I watched a movie called The Cleaning Lady Ooh. And this is this was there is, sex and all. No, I got a, I got a screener from the director. It's not actually out in theaters or anything yet. It's not on Netflix or anything like that. It's it's doing the horror movie circuit right now. Uh -huh. And uh, I got a screen for it and I watched it and it's fuck, dude. It's fuck. You, I can't wait for you to see the shit when it finally comes out. Well, I didn't. I forgot. I guess you forgot to give me that in the email. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking woman, dude. Uh, there's this <coughs> kind of rich lady and she's she's you you'll love this. I, I swear to God, you will. So she she's young. Am. She's got you know everything going for her. She, she's got a nice life, but she's she's dating. Uh, and fucking a married guy but she's so obsessed with how fucked up that is that she literally goes to AA meetings and cries about how she can't break the relationship and she has like she has a, a sponsor who she talks to and she's like I just I know he wants to see me and she I, fucks the sponsor. I think I'm gonna let him come over you know oh. it's like way over the top and, and, and you start to kind of hate her a little bit but then the, she, this cleaning lady comes over her house and she's all scarred and fucked up and the movie starts and she literally picks up rats and she puts them in a blender and she grinds up the rats and makes this fucking thick blood milkshake mm -hmm. and then she takes it out into a shed and forces some things she has trapped there to eat it sounds and like, you can hear it eating it. it's like it sounds like when you stir macaroni it's fucked it up it sounds like when i work at my pharmacy when i give pills to people <laughs> so they, they their stories come intertwined and it's a really fucked up movie once it's finally released i think it's going to do really well so that's yeah. cool yeah cool stuff a cool lot stuff. of terrifying things and by the way i did watch twilight one of the best action sequence oh horror God. movies ever come at me spider monkey <laughs> Glitter! But yeah, that's it. That's Did you good. really watch that? No, fuck no, I can't wall the first one. Um, <laughs> it was on TV. I was like, I was like, I was just like, I'll watch it. But uh, anyhow, I've never seen the whole thing. I gotta get on that. So we've been we've been we've been slammed uh, with doing videos. We, again, we watched all the Halloweens. We've talked about that a billion times. Um, but that's kind of the, the little edge of stuff that we haven't got to on our channel that we brought to you as a gift. April O'Neil, shut it. Show me the secret of the ooze. <laughs> so, uh, Lee, thank you for having us, man. This is It's always a joy to be on this wonderful channel. Oh, like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Goodbye, I Lee. love your fucking faces, especially you, Lee. I hope you guys have an awesome time. And by the way, when I say it like that, if you guys ever played the Telltale games, Walking Dead? No. Well, there's a part, like one of the main characters' name is Lee. The little girl always goes, Lee, Lee. Like, that always, that's Lee. It's funny. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like it. Anyway. I like beer. See you guys. Hey guys, I forgot to give a quick little intro to Art because I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to make it. I know he is super, super busy, but uh, Art always comes through. And you know what? I just got to say, Art is such a great friend and I owe him a lot because he was one of the first that really helped me get my channel going. He invited me to his show, Cineclash, and you know we became fast friends. We've been on podcasts together. Uh, and you know, he's, he's like a freaking giant now. The guy literally has like 200,000 subscribers on both his channels. So th just the fact that he would come on my channel is just such a great representation of what type of person he is. He's really one of the nicest people I've ever met. And uh, Art, I just wanted to give you a really nice introduction here. Super honored that you would be on my 31 days of October. And uh, can't wait to see what you deliver because you are hilarious in your videos too, by the way, good sir. So anyway, take it away, Art. Hey, horror fans, I'm Art from the A to Z Show and Let Me Explain. And I'm here to talk about some of the most goriest, the most terrifying, the most jacked up family dramas that I saw this past October or really just some of my favorites that I would watch year round. And a big shout out to Lee because... You guys and all of you who are like subscribed to like the horror community, that niche that you guys have on, on YouTube and Facebook and throughout all of the internet, 
it's insane. Like, you guys as horror fans appreciate the genre and you appreciate yourselves. You guys who love slasher movies treat each other better than the people who love dramas. So a big shout out to Lee from Drum Dumbs because the passion that this dude has for horror movies in general is fantastic. You know, I may not always agree with some of the picks he may like, but the passion that he has, I think, really shines through because horror as a genre, a lot of people think is not up there. It's not as classy as a bunch of the other genres out there. And as baloney, there's a bunch of things, a bunch of movies within horror that really shine through and that's why I want to break down some of my favorites. Let me explain. One of the more fresher ones would be Hereditary, a movie that I caught earlier this year at Sundance and I was hyping it up like crazy because I was telling people, bro, 2018 is the year for horror. And Hereditary was one of my favorites because it again proves this movie, just because it's a horror movie, you know, we're not used to horror movies getting nominated for Oscars. You know, recently we've been getting some love with Get Out. This one in particular, I think, should take it all the way because this has, Lady Gaga, you're great. This has the best female performance of the year. I love it because it mixes the whole psychological aspect of it, like demons within you that cause a bunch of, uh, you know, problems within your family. And then there's also the aspect of it that can just be straight up demons. Plus, this scene right here is, is a standout of the year. Of course, you know that I have to mention it, and I'm sure many of you probably have as well. Halloween. Town. I love Michael Myers. Michael Myers is great. I know I'm on a channel where Michael Myers is king. I think he's okay. Dude's a little bit of a creeper. He, he doesn't talk, just hides in closets and stuff going after babysitters. But, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. I personally think those are a bit better. But out of all of them, the thing I'm rewatching every year during October is Halloween Town. This is a movie that I am pretty sure is like Hocus Pocus. Kenny Ortega had Ho Hocus Pocus and he was like, you know what? I got this extra script that didn't become Hocus Pocus. Y'all want to make it into something. And then we got four Halloween Towns out of it. I personally always find myself quoting things from the movies. Like if I ever get a crazy Uber driver, you know, I'm thinking of that skeleton taxi driver. I ask my grandma for something and you know she's going to be pulling it out of her never ending bag. Finding out you're a wizard. Bro, Marnie found out she was a witch at their Tina, right? So for me, the moment that I have a child and October comes around and I want to show him a scary movie, it's going to be The Human Centipede, but then I'm also going to show him Halloween Town. Now these two I love equally for the meta-ness. Uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, I remember seeing this with my buddies. We were in a garage, it was as cold as can be. We can see our breath just covering up all over the screen. But this was like the first time I like experienced that meta-ness, that Deadpool meta-ness of the fact that all of the actors, you know, like Robert England, all of the people who were in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies are playing themselves in this movie and they're thinking about making another Nightmare on Elm Street movie. But as they're working on the script for the new Nightmare on Elm Street movie within the Nightmare on Elm Street movie, that then becomes the Nightmare on Elm Street movie. It's completely wild and I absolutely love it. I think it's one of the best at that. You know, now in 2018, everyone's doing meta stuff everywhere, but uh, this movie will always like hold that place for me because I thought it was like fantastic just the way it was done, a new way of storytelling within the genre of horror. Another one that defies it is Scream 4. I know, I'm not saying it's the best one, you know, Scream 1 in and of itself was trying to uh, defy the genre, especially a bunch of the tropes. So it's funny that four sequels later, it's doing the exact same thing. Like this movie starts off with an intro, within an intro, within an intro, just like the whole plot twist that happens towards the end of the movie. I think this is one of the more underrated ones. And I, this was one that I had caught an accident. I don't even know how I ended up at this like screen. I don't know what I was watching. I'm pretty sure it was like a series of unfortunate adventures. I ended up at like the screen for screening and I loved it. Now all of those I love, those are ones that I always recommend to people and they go get it. But there's one movie as I'm looking at it right now. Oh, actually, no, I am not. There's one movie that I never have in my collection because I'm literally letting people borrow it all the time. Like, I, if I was renting this, I would not be in any debt whatsoever. The movie is The Others. This is a movie that I always recommend to people to, to watch. I've literally given out my DVD multiple times. And... Uh, I absolutely love this movie. I remember watching this movie back in the day and just being blown away with all, all of the direction with it. Not only the acting, but just the cinematography, the way the story is told, the way that I still watch it and every single time I'm catching new clues that lead up to that really grand finale. And I've seen other movies that have tried to do that similar type of finale. It's cute, it's great, but it's not the others. So for me, all of these are the ones that I'm watching continuously when it comes to October with a bunch of, you know, the other scary movies that come out. But I love how all of these 
are technically considered scary movies, but the horror level, you know, can be psychological. It can be a slasher film. It can be a family film, a family drama. It goes all over the place, showing you that horror has so many aspects to it. And guys, for my section, I'm not telling you what I watch. I'm going to talk to celebrities, hopefully, and find out what they have been watching for um, the Halloween season and maybe a couple questions for them. Um, Hopefully I get lucky here. We'll see what happens. I just saw David DeCuffin. I'm in the uh, celebrity room right now. Uh, it's pretty nice and spaced out. There's a lot of people here. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting uh, Bill Mosley and Sid Haig. It looks like for the most part the lines aren't too bad, uh, except for a couple of them. But uh, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm going to see what I can do. See what kind of magic I can whip up. There's. I'm looking at Bill Mosley right now. He's literally right there. But I don't, I'm scared to point the camera. So yeah, and I'm gonna go meet the Saska sisters too. I brought my See No Evil 2 Blu-ray, so I'm looking forward to meeting them. And I, ju I just passed the sleepaway camp. Sorry, so I'm, I'm freaking out here. Okay guys, um, it's starting to slim down a little bit. It's getting close to around like 6.30 now. Oh, look at all this cool stuff right here. How are you doing? Beautiful. But yeah, look at all these uh, awesome framed horror art, or horror art with figures, I guess you could say. Too cool. One thing about this place is there's a lot of stuff that you will never find. Unless maybe you look online, but uh, like you're not going to find this stuff at like Hot Topic. That's another big reason to go to conventions because of all the great stuff. Like look at this right here. All these great like variant Jason masks. Oh, he definitely. Too cool. Oh, and then there's my boy Myers right down there. That's awesome. But yeah, just a lot of cool stuff. Um, I was not able to get celebrities to videotape. Apparently, I'm not cool enough. But uh, I got um, all three girls from Sleepaway Camp to autograph my VHS. I got to uh, get Elvira to autograph my Funko. I got the Saska sisters to autograph my See No Evil 2 Blu-ray. And they said they're totally down for a 3 No Evil. So hopefully that happens. But uh, yeah, look, check out this art right here. So, somebody made these for me. Too I'm cool. so proud because it just calls me a writer. <laughs> so, very good. And, and, and Jolly the Jane. The cosplay here. Oh, there's uh, Strangers Pray at Night. Freaking love that movie. Damien Maffey would be proud. And then over here we got this really cool Sam's Club banner. Everybody loves trick or treat, right? And I'm looking for some like Arrow Blu-rays. That's usually, I'm usually a sucker for, you know, those rare horror Blu-rays, and uh, this is usually the place to get them. So I'm looking for the Arrow booths. So we'll see if we can find them.
So I just happened to walk by and Felissa Rose and uh, Catherine Kami are just, they're dressed up in their outfits right now. It's pretty, hello Catherine, how you doing? <laughs> this is too cool. Why aren't your hair a spooky empire? There you go. What do you like to watch for the Halloween season? Is there any movies that you like to watch? Or, or are you too yeah, busy? Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> Besides Sleepaway Camp. Um, I guess, like, for me, it's with my kids who so usually be watching things like Poltergeist and you know, Exorcist. Definitely Halloween, the new Halloween. Yep. They've already seen it twice. Did you like the new Halloween? I, I just. Oh, okay. I loved it. I just, just and wondering. My family loves it so much. Yeah, okay. that they, it's very controversial, though. A lot of people are saying that they don't like it. It's weird to me. I don't know, but need to go away. they yeah, need to go away because it's great. It's really good. Like Jamie Lee rocks. Yeah, Rock. yeah. She really. Uh -oh. Thank you. Trouble just walked in. Yes. Uh -oh. Now I got the the, the trifecta right there. I. <laughs> They're getting along now. It's it's awesome. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It could just be on camera. Karen, do you like to watch any scary movies around the Halloween season? Oh my goodness! We should turn this off, and I should get coached by somebody. <laughs> I am literally between all the girls from Camp Arrow. How cool is that? You just made my night. This is awesome, Rock on. So yeah, thank you so much. Sleepaway Camp forever. Yes, for life. Do you, do you feel like it's like bigger now than ever? I don't think it is. I didn't even know. It's weird looking at you like that. I was thinking the same thing you all looked at. I was thinking the same thing, but you literally Has it been a while since all three of you have seen each other? Right? It's been 35 years since you've seen each other. That is insane. Oh my God, guys! Did you just, did you see that? I just literally got to get all three girls from Slipboy Camp on camera. First time they've been together in 35 years. That's insane. But I can just hang it up right now. That was it. That's all I needed. That was insane. But uh, they're going to be doing a panel, so I'm going to be going to that here in a minute. But uh, this has been the greatest freaking trip to Spooky Empire. Even though it's the second, I don't think anything could ever top this. I really don't. I'm blown away. Just blown away. My boy. Love the new movie. It's awesome. So, Mike Pavone. And <laughs> I'm filming. This is Mia. Say hello, Mia. How are you doing? I'm fine. Uh, did you like the new Halloween movie? I forgot to ask you. You, d you did like it. Okay, good. Because Mike Pavone and I were talking about how we love it, I think, a little bit more than everybody else. You probably already know I love it more than everybody else. But, uh... Me, Victoria, and Tony. Yeah. We're the OG fans. There you go. Let's get a high five. I just met all three girls from Sleepaway Camp and got them to record an interview with me. Yeah, I was blown away. So. <laughs> nice seeing you again, man. Let's check that out. That looks pretty cool. That's Spooky Empire in a nutshell right there. <laughs> love it, love it. Bill Mosley. There. This is the creature from the Black Lagoon. This is the guy that was in the suit. That's a legend right there. That's too awesome. This is Shannon McMillan, and this is your husband, right? Yeah. Okay. John. What's John? John looks kind of like a bear right now, but uh, we're gonna go with that. He looks awesome though. <laughs> But I just wanted to get you two on video because you two are awesome and it was nice meeting you guys among the other killer flicksters and hope hopefully this is the first of many. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well guys, I am walking back to my car. It was a fun ass night at uh, Spooky Empire. Uh, I'm going to go get some uh, McDonald's because Welcome to McDonald's. Go ahead and order one if you're ready. Yeah, I'll have a uh, McDouble with cheese only ketchup, a medium fry and a large sweet tea.
You said for the McDouble only cheese and ketchup? Yes, ma'am. Anything else? No, thank you. It's going to be 520 first one, though. Thank you so much. No problem. When it's late, you want to get McDonald's or Taco Bell or something like that, right? But, uh, yeah, this was just too awesome. It looks like it's light in the camera, but it's actually getting dark out here. So, I don't know. Maybe that's my camera's just too awesome. I don't know. But, uh, anyway, guys, this wraps up the final week of 31 days of October. Thank you all. My guests, please go down below. Subscribe to their channels. They're awesome people. And, more importantly, they're great friends. Thanks for uh, uh, the, all the great Killer Flicks members that I got to meet today. Too awesome. Anyway, guys, my voice is going out. But uh, I'm not going to say drum dumb out because I'm going to let uh, Shannon McMillan and her husband John do it. So take it away, guys. I'll let you guys say drum dumb out. How about that? Oh, drum dumb out. Boom. <laughs>